Hello and welcome to Studio 415. On today's show, you'll get to hear about the proposed changes to Carroll High School. You'll see the Charger Spotlight shine down on math teacher Kyle Stoffel. And you'll hear about a foreign exchange program for teachers. All of that and more, coming up next. You don't even have time to sit here on the computer icing your grace. I'd say about two Will Jamesons. Two Will Jamesons? Mm -hmm. 365 pounds. Um, we'd love for the, the, the um, construction to potentially begin in 2024. Welcome to Studio 415. I'm Tristan Wasserman. And I'm Lennon Ormiston. Recent school board meetings have brought a newly proposed project to Northwest Allen County Schools. The cause for concern is if Carroll High School is running out of room for its students. Studio 415 reporter Quentin Gilbert has more on this story and joins us in the studio. Thanks, Lennon. At recent school board meetings, the topic of building and expanding next buildings has been a top priority. In my story, I went to a meeting and see what changes could be coming to Carroll. Northwest Allen County Schools is one of the fastest growing school districts in Indiana. And with the district set to get as big as 9,000 students, extra room will be necessary. Proposals at previous school board meetings have outlined plans for a $46 million expansion project. This project shouldn't result in any additional taxes because of previous budget planning done by NACS. This proposal includes an expanded cafeteria, media center, and learning commons on the south side of the school, a new weight room on the north side of the field house towards Carroll Road, and finally new classrooms on the east side of the building out towards Bethel Road. Chief Operations Officer Brandon Bidding explains some of the upcoming additions. We learned this from our demographic study about the potential for needing space for 500 more students. And so it really is, uh, we've been working with an uh, architectural firm, and it really is an addition of about 25 potential new classroom spaces or learning spaces that we're looking at for Carroll High School. Beyond the high school, NACS has multiple projects to add capacity. At a recent board meeting, a third middle school started to be discussed. Although still in the very beginning stage, this new middle school, as well as a new central office building, are set to get put in motion soon. Max is trying to get all three projects on one bond so that these projects can be completed as efficiently as possible. Bidding laid out a potential timeline for these projects. So the budget hearings will probably happen in May, we hope, um, which then, of course, will allow for the design process to really kick in. Um, I could see if all of it goes through. Of course, it all has to pass through budget hearings. Um, we'd love for the, the, the um, construction to potentially begin in 2024. Plans for the high school have already been approved by the school board. Looking at this map, you can see the upcoming additions. In orange, you see the new weight room and health rooms that will be connected to the field house. In red, you see the new media center with the section set out as a welcome office for the student parking lot, allowing those staff members a spot to work that isn't in the middle of the hallway. In yellow, you see an expanded cafeteria that should allow more students per lunch. On the far east side of the screen, you see the 86,000 square feet area set out for new classrooms. Any other colored spots on the map indicate classes being renovated and or moved. The old weight room will see itself as a computer science and engineering classroom soon. These expansions settle the debate for now, whether to stay at one high school or build another. Senior Gabe Starks is glad to remain with one Carroll High School. I think it'd be kind of weird seeing a new high school just because, you know, it's always been Carroll. Um, but I do like the idea of just adding on because, I mean, this whole school is an add-on. Um, you think of the Freshman Center, um, it's expanded a lot since that, so. Carroll High School has seen many additions through its six years of education. This next set of renovations is set to get start in 2024. For Studio 415, I'm Quentin Gilbert. With more than 760,000 deaths caused by the drug overdoses since 1999 and opioids causing 75% of those deaths, the opioid epidemic has continued to become a rising issue within the United States. However, in my story, I explain how one local program has targeted a fight against the opioid problem and how they are bringing hope to Fort Wayne. Launching in October 2019, supported by the cooperation of Parkview Health, the Fort Wayne Police Department, Lutheran Social Services of Indiana, and the Purdue Fort Wayne Community Research Institute, the Hope and Recovery Team, also known as the HARP program, was founded on the idea of helping Fort Wayne locals with substance use disorders, specifically with opioids and fentanyl. Fort Wayne Police Department Captain Kevin Hunter initially started the program by helping to write its grant. Moving forward with the process, Hunter was then able to speak with detectives who volunteered for the program, and then wrote a second grant to hire two master's level social workers. We came up with this idea of uh, the Hope and Recovery Team to go out and talk to people after they've overdosed and get them connected to treatment services. Because if we could arrest our way out of this issue, we'd already be done with it. The HEART program strive to fight the opioid epidemic has proven to be very effective these past three and a half years. 
From August 19th, 2020 to August 20th, 2021, the HARP program completed 49 runs, which consists of going to opioid users' homes to provide Narcan and offer treatment. Additionally, from October 19, 2020 to September 20th, 2021, the program saw the reception of 17 referrals and 13 engagements with support services. Along with this, Hunter also wants to put into perspective that the HARP program has already had a huge impact within Fort Wayne. So last year, uh, our non-fatal overdoses were reduced by 28% compared to 2021. That is a huge decrease in non-fatal overdoses, and I really credit the Hope and Recovery team for really reaching out, talking to, you know, over 450 people. Fort Wayne Police Department social worker Samantha Taylor also reveals the impact that the program has had on herself. I think that definitely opened my heart um, and made me just have a better understanding and realizing that there are going to be people in every profession that aren't good at their job, but that's not the majority. You know, officers have a huge heart. They're always serving the public and we get to work with them and that's awesome. Through the HARP program's interactions and impacts, they have learned many factors that work into providing support to those affected by substance use disorder. These lessons consist of anything from learning that people in the community want to reach out for help and treatment, to facing the very real fact that people are dying from overdosing. Hunter reveals this heartbreaking truth by explaining how he has talked to many parents who have lost their children to overdose. I've talked to so many parents who have lost a child to an overdose death and it is by far one of the worst things I've had to deal with. Knowing that we have programs that can stop those overdoses and overdose deaths from happening is really beneficial. With this, lead social worker Darcy Robbins shares what lessons she has learned while working with the HEART program. Our youngest is eight and our oldest has been like 74. So how do we talk to all of these different people and engage with them in a process that's super uncomfortable? Um, and it's made me rethink uh, a lot about how I approach things. With a set system in place and clear attainable goals, the HARP program now sets its eyes on the future. With the likelihood of adding more Fort Wayne police detectives, as well as more social workers, the HARP program is more hopeful than ever to get people the support they need. Robbins also wants to note how the use of fentanyl with teens and young adults can become an even bigger issue in the future. Fentanyl right now is out. Like that's out there. Rainbow fentanyl is out there. It's in our schools. It's what kids are doing. Um, and you don't know what you're taking. At the end of the day, everyone within the HARP program, whether it be the Fort Wayne Police Department captain, its police officers, or its social workers, they all want to assure that if you need help, then they are there for you. Taylor amplifies this reassurance by stating the sole purpose and goals of the Hope and Recovery team. We are going to help you with anything you need, and there's no judgment. It's all harm reduction, so there's no um, like punishment or punitive action for us. Um, we believe that arresting your way out of the problem isn't going to work. Um, so we're, our goal isn't to like get people in trouble, it's just truly to meet you where you're at and help you with whatever goal you have. With a growing concern about opioid use among teens and young adults, the HARP program's reach out to the Fort Wayne community has proven to be even more necessary. If you're in need of help, call 260-427-5801. For Studio 415, I'm Leonard Ormiston. Indiana is home to many small businesses that generate tax dollars, which help contribute to local schools, police departments, and more. Studio 415 reporter Zoe Garwood got the opportunity to visit one of these small businesses that is using a passion for home decor to help the community. A shared love for interior design, friendship, and a good deal led neighbors Jackie Chrisman and Val Klee to start their shared small business, Westwin & Co. The new store sells popular home decor and furniture brands at 40 to 70% off their retail price. The store originally operated exclusively online through platforms such as Instagram and Facebook. After two years of online sales, Chrisman and Klee made the decision to open a storefront where customers could get a more personal experience with their product. In 2022, Westwin & Co. opened its doors to Garrett, Indiana. A physical location also gives the co-owners the opportunity to show off their interior design skills. Chrisman says that their product presentation gives customers a more enjoyable shopping experience. And when you go to other stores that might do what we do, you have to do a lot of digging and a lot of searching. There might be clothes, there might be baby toys, and at our store, you can find the, the um, in-style product staged, and there's no digging. It's right here. Along with affordable prices and a cozy atmosphere, Westwin & Co. makes it a priority to connect with their community. Every Thursday night, they partner with small business owners to showcase the wide variety of local products and services in the area.
Klee says that these Thursday night events help develop a system of support among local business owners. We felt like um, starting a new business was harder than we imagined and we know that there are so many local people that are also doing the same thing. So we just want to support them in hosting them at our store and giving them kind of a, an opportunity to share their business with other people locally. Along with the local community, Klee hopes that Westwood & Co's small business promotions will help NAC students pursue their own passions. On Thursday evening, if there's any young entrepreneurs out there that go to Carroll that are wanting to grow their business, please reach out to us because we would love to host you. For the next seven days, any Carroll student, parent, or teacher can get 10% off at the store if they mention Studio 415. And make sure to check out Westwind Clearance & Co on Instagram. For Studio 415, I'm Zoe Gartwood. Charger Spotlight host Will Jamison sat down with another Carroll teacher to learn more about them and ask them a few tough questions. Today, Will puts the spotlight on math teacher Kyle Stoffel and tries to find out why students are afraid to raise their hands in his class. Welcome back to the Charter Spotlight, and on today's episode, we're interviewing your math teacher Kyle Stoffel to ask him some questions about his personal life. All right, well, thank you, Mr. Stoffel, for joining the Charter Spotlight. Good to be here, Will. All right, awesome. So, what do you grow in your garden? What do I grow in my garden? Um, pretty much anything that's edible. I've got sweet corn, cantaloupe, tomatoes, 240 tomato plants, by the way. <laughs> what sport did you play in high school? Played golf and tennis. Golf and tennis? I mean, yeah, I know tennis is shocking to you. But I, that's completely shocking. I figured. I never knew it. So, how did you get into teaching? How did I get into teaching? Um, so, both my parents were teachers, dad high school, and mom was elementary, and I knew I didn't want to do elementary. Um, and it's just something I guess I, I grew up with and, and thought it would be something I'd like to do. Okay. So, are you good at chess? I am very mediocre at chess. Okay. So, what's your bench press max? Bench press max, ever or currently? I'd say ever. Ever? That sounds, that's probably better. Uh, I'd say about two Will Jamesons. Two Will Jamesons? Mm -hmm. 365 pounds? Less. 330. 330? Yeah. Hey, that's pretty good. Thanks, man. How do you feel after becoming a Hall of Fame tennis coach? Uh, pretty much the same I felt a couple weeks ago before I was a Hall of Fame tennis coach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, is it true you live in the school? Live in the school. Mm -hmm. Despite the fact that I have a microwave and fridge in my room, um, that is not true. Okay. Although I maybe spend almost as many hours here as I do at home. Yeah. Who did you vote for in the 2020 election? I don't think that's the information you're privy to. Good answer. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, have you ever actually played tennis? I don't think you ever did more than warm up with us. <laughs> I have not played competitively in probably 25 years. Okay. Yeah. Do you think you could beat me at tennis? Hmm. It would depend. If you were consistent enough to run me around, uh, that'd be tough for me then. Okay. Yeah. What is the best math formula? The best math formula is obviously the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem? Mm -hmm. Okay. Why? Yeah, everybody uses it. Do we? And you know it. Okay. Don't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you look like a saxophone player. <laughs> I look like nothing to do with any sort of music at all kind of person. Do you play the saxophone? I do not play the saxophone. I would love to learn, but no, I do not. Okay. How much of your salary goes into purchasing your toupee? My toupee? Yeah. You want to give a tug on that toupee? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's, just, that's patting my head. You want to tug it? You want me to tug yeah, it? So it'd come right off over a toupee. So. Yeah, I would, but it yeah. could be glued on there. You can tug as hard as you like. I'm all right. Okay. okay. So none of my salary, thank you. Okay. That's awesome. <laughs> Uh, should we introduce our special guest today? Do we have a choice? Uh, no. I didn't think so. Yeah, that's what I thought. All right, Jaden Householder, would you please come out here? All right, so how do you feel about Judge Judy? Judge Judy? Um, I don't watch Judge Judy, if that gives you any indication. Uh, what do you have to say to students who fail a math class? Uh, do your homework. Try harder. Better luck next time. <laughs> uh, how can I get taller? How can you get taller? Um, you see those heels that girls wear? Uh, it's probably... It's a good idea, Jaden. Uh, why didn't four go out with five? Tell me. Uh, he was too squared. Very good. I'm not going to laugh hysterically, sorry. I personally like the ending to uh, Space Buddies. Really? Yes. Okay. It's a great movie. I see. Mm -hmm. uh, how often do you get a spray tan? A spray tan? That would be never. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Stoffel. Thank you. Thank you, Jaden. Thank you, Mr. Stoffel. Yep. Thanks, Jaden. Thank you, Will. Yeah. You heard it here first. Kyle Stoffel doesn't have a toupee, and he thinks you should do your homework. Studio 415, I'm William Jameson. Every year, Carroll High School invites students from other countries to learn in America.
and to experience the culture here. This year, a teacher has the same opportunity. Studio 415 reporter William Jamison spent time with teacher Kay Till, who hosted a fellow teacher from Brazil in order to learn more about this engaging program. With 195 countries on the whole earth, the United States is typically where others come for furthering education. Carroll High School has had that honor with hosting many exchange student programs and now an exchange teacher program. The Bilateral Educator Exchange Program focuses on Brazilian teacher involvement in the American education system. Not only does it allow for new experiences for the Brazilian teachers, but it gives American hosts a new perspective on the world's education. Bruna Berton is one of the teachers who has had the opportunity to come and experience American high school education firsthand. Berton comes from Brazil, where she has a teaching degree in mathematics. She was intrigued by how much mathematics is taught in our curriculum. For example, she was surprised how college-level classes like calculus can be learned in the high school grade level. Berton describes her experience with American and Brazilian schooling as different, simply based on the factors of personnel and the buildings. It's way different because in our school we have like 300 students from K to 12, so it's a very small school. And the teachers, like, they move around classes, not the students, so it's really different. With these differing school experiences, Ms. Berton is able to travel back to Brazil and adapt how she teaches with the added experience of teaching in a different culture. Kate hosted Berton and taught with her during her stay. With the help of Jill Warner, who was a part of the Bilateral Educator Exchange Program, Till was able to involve herself in this experience. Till describes having Berton as a cultural influence and refresh in her educational life. It has been very exciting, um, very educational. Um, it's been, she's only been with me for about a week now, but um, I have learned a lot about her culture and um, also about ours and what our education system offers. In June of 2023, Kato plans on traveling to Brazil while staying with Berton through the same program in order to see what Brazilian education is like firsthand. The Bilateral Educator Exchange Program claims that their goal is to inspire globally minded educators and students in order to diversify Indiana's education system and to connect Indiana to the global world. During the COVID-19 pandemic, the Bilateral Educator Exchange Program slowed down a bit, but expect them to be coming back in full force. For Studio 415, I'm William Jameson. At the beginning of the second semester, students may have noticed a new face in their afternoon study halls. Studio 415 reporter J.C. Zollinger takes a deeper look into Carol's new face at CHS. Thanks, Lennon and Tristan. She owns her own custom apparel business and her own home health care business, all while she's currently working on getting her master's degree as a nurse practitioner. Despite all of her pursuits, instructional assistant Charlotta Mitchell loves working at Carroll and spending time with her students. Charlotta Mitchell graduated from high school her junior year and then proceeded to graduate from Purdue University. She also has a son that goes to Maple Creek, but when she got the chance to work at a public school, she chose to work at Carroll. Mitchell comes in after the lunch period to oversee study halls in the cafeteria, but she sees her job as much more than that. Because they need to sometimes be pushed further than their main teachers just because we're considered, I'm going to say like the babysitters. As a reminder, as a mom, it's like, hey, do your work. You don't even have time to sit here on the computer. I sing your grace. Get it going. Or what can I do to help you? Mitchell has an active style of running her study hall that has not gone unnoticed by her students. She gets up and communicates with her students and treats them like adults. Junior Morgan Wozniak has been able to grow a good connection with Mitchell. She appreciates Mitchell for all the positivity and kindness she brings to the cafeteria. Um, she's different because she interacts with us and she tries to get to know us. I've noticed that she'll go around and like talk to different students and she memorized, it, she memorized everyone's name a lot quicker than I've noticed a lot of the other teachers did and I thought that was super cool. Mitchell starts off the first day by setting the ground rules for her study halls. By making her expectations clear, Mitchell is able to create an efficient environment where her students can thrive. Junior Dalen Reyes says that Mitchell's unique style makes study hall fun. I mean, she's very personable. I mean, just that alone, having someone that you know you can, you can go to or talk to and that you can get help from, I mean, that just kind of is different on her own. While Mitchell stands apart from other teachers, she still had to learn the process. Mitchell was trained by study hall aide Carrie Wraith. Both Mitchell and Wraith want to see their students succeed and move on to bigger and better things. One of the biggest struggles is, is seeing potential in kids who don't see it in themselves. And, and I am always doing my best to make sure that if you're in, if you're in my class 
We're on a team and I have the same expectations for all of you. Carroll faculty members are here to support students and make sure they thrive. With this, Mitchell spreads positivity and kindness through her study halls, but still make sure students get their work done. For Studio 415, I'm JC Zellinger. That's all we have for today. Thanks for watching. If there's a story you would like us to cover, please let us know. For all of us here at Studio 415, have a great week, Carol.